Guys, in this video, I'm going to run through the British and German tanks we could be all rolling around in when the British are added to, to Hell at Loose in June. We know they are coming with two new maps, the first being El Alamein, based in late 1942, and a map set in Holland, which is likely to be an Operation Market Garden map set in September 1944. As I've already discussed in my previous video on the British infantry weapons, these lists are all based on the idea that they're going to be historically accurate for the specific time period. For example, I really hope we don't see Sherman Fireflies with their impressive 17 pounder guns rolling around in the Egyptian desert of El Alamein. That would be painfully historically inaccurate. Throughout World War II, every warring country improved their tank fleets by producing, or in the case of the British, also buying better tanks from the United States. These usually meant tanks with more powerful guns, better armour and overall improvements in design. First, let's examine the tank rosters which we should expect from both the British and German forces on the El Alamein map. Held at Loose's current tank roster for each faction is broken up by the categories of recon vehicle, light tank, medium tank and heavy tank. This doesn't quite fit the British doctrine of infantry and cruiser tanks which they had before and during World War II, but nevertheless, I'll just tell you which tanks could fit those roles. First up is the recon vehicles. Between 1940 and 1943, the Brits used a variety of armoured cars in the Western Desert Campaign, which could be used for the recon vehicle role. But I'll only include the vehicles which had been issued to soldiers before the Second Battle of El Alamein in October 1942. These include the Daimler armoured car, which was designed in 1939 and entered British service in 1941. It had a 2-pounder gun and a 7.92mm Beza machine gun. The Humbler armoured car also saw action in North Africa, although early variants which did see action at El Alamein would have only been armed with machine guns. At the Battle of El Alamein, in the light tank department, the British had 119 American Stuart tanks, specifically the M3 model, and Team 17 could relatively easily convert the American M5A1 Stuart currently in the game for the light tank role for the British. However, the Brits also had light tanks of their own, such as the Vickers light tank Mark VI, but these were light tanks from the mid-1930s, so we're really showing their age by 1942. For example, they didn't have a main gun like the Stuarts, and said they were only armed with machine guns. In the medium tank department, the Brits had the American-made M3 tanks. The original American design was known as the M3 Lee, while those made to the British specifications were known as the M3 Grant. The British had 170 of these tanks at the Second Battle of El Alamein. This tank had two main guns, a hull-mounted 75mm gun and a 37mm gun in the turret, which first saw action in North Africa in May 1942. It performed quite well against most of the German tanks it faced, and it was superior to the Italian tanks it encountered in North Africa. However, the M3 Lee was soon superseded by the arrival, just in time for the Second Battle of El Alamein, of the famous M4 Sherman medium tank. In 1942, the Shermans were also armed with a 75mm gun, but this was placed in the turret, which allowed for a greater field of fire, which didn't involve the driver having to move the tank into position to find targets. The Shermans were also either cast or welded, and not riveted together like the M3. Riveting was an inferior method of building tanks. At the Second Battle of El Alamein, the British had 252 Sherman tanks. However, the most numerous tank fielded at the Second Battle of El Alamein by the British was their very own Crusader tank, classed as a cruiser tank. This was intended to be maneuverable and engage in tank-on-tank -tank combat, while heavier infantry tanks were supposed to support the British infantry. At El Alamein, the British had 294 Crusader tanks, a mix between Mark II and Mark III variants. The Mark II Crusaders had a 2-pounder gun, while the Mark III's had the new, more capable 6-pounder gun and slightly thicker armour. Hell at Loose, could include the Crusader tanks as medium tanks, but perhaps the 2-pounder variant should cost less fuel for the commander to spawn than the more powerful 6-pounder variant. Heavily armoured and slower moving British infantry tanks like the Valentine were also present at the Second Battle of El Alamein. The British had 194 Valentines at the battle. The Valentines had largely replaced the older Matilda infantry tanks, which had been lost due to battlefield attrition in the Battle of France and the early parts of the Western Desert Campaign. The Valentines at El Alamein were armed with a two-pounder gun. As such, they would properly fit best as the British medium tank according to the tank rolls of Hell at Loose. It's also quite likely that we will see Valentines as they were earmarked for inclusion by the original developers Black Matter in their old roadmap, so I'm sure those assets may already exist when Team 17 took over development of the game. Finally, on the 1942 map, the heavy tank role should go to the Churchill tank. This was another infantry tank developed by the British. 
It was put into production in 1941 and the Churchill first saw action during the botched landings on the French port of Dieppe in August 1942. Six of the Mark III tanks armed with a six pounder gun took part in the second battle of El Alamein. As a quick side note, I was thinking what vehicle could fit the half track role for the British? The Germans would have the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 251, the current half track they have in the game, but it just needs a desert paint job and it saw service throughout the whole war and it was definitely used in North Africa. But I was racking my brain as to what the Brits could get and then I realised I'd forgotten about the iconic Universal Carrier, also known as the Bren Carrier as it was typically fitted with a Bren gun to offer some fire support for the troops it ferried around the battlefield. Anyway, let's look at what the aforementioned British tanks were up against at the Second Battle of El Alamein by looking at the German roster. The German recon vehicle currently in the game is the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 234 or Special Purpose Vehicle 234 known as the Puma which has a 50mm cannon. However, this recon vehicle only went into production in 1943 so it would not be available for the Battle of El Alamein. In the battle, the Germans would have used an earlier type of reconnaissance vehicle, such as the special purpose vehicle 232, which also had 8 wheels, but it was armed with a 20mm autocannon as its main armament, same as the German in-game light tank, the Lux. The Germans also used other recon vehicles, such as the Leichter Panzer Sperwagen 222 or the light armoured reconnaissance vehicle 222, which in 1942 would have been armed with a 20mm cannon and a coaxial MG34. Currently, the light tank in the game is the Panzer II Lux, or Lynx in English, but this light tank was not produced until 1943, so once again, it should not be available on the 1942 battlefield. Instead, the Germans could get the original Panzer II as its light tank. This was a 1930s designed light tank that formed the backbone of the German Panzer forces in the early years of the war and continued to be used on all fronts throughout the conflict. It was armed with a 20mm cannon and an MT-34 coaxial machine gun, but it had thinner armour than the Panzer III or Panzer IV which followed it. The best tank for the medium tank role for the Germans at El Alamein would be the Panzer III. The German Africa Corps had 88 Panzer III's armed with a 50mm gun at the battle. The Panzer III designed in the 1930s was used extensively by the Germans during World War II. Between 1937 and 1943, close to 6,000 were produced across 12 different variants featuring upgrades to its main gun, suspension, engine and armour. It was originally intended as a tank to fight other armoured vehicles with its anti-tank gun. These Panzer III's were supposed to work in conjunction with the Panzer IVs, which had originally been designed as support tanks for the infantry with their 75mm short barrelled guns, capable of firing high explosive shells against soft targets. But these roles would be reversed in time as the Panzer IV had more upgunning potential as it could fit larger guns on the Panzer IV chassis which were capable of defeating heavier armed tanks which emerged as the war went on. This brings me to the heavy tank options for the Germans. There were no Tiger tanks at El Alamein. The Tiger tank first saw action on the Eastern Front in August of 1942 but it would not be used in combat in North Africa until December 1942 in Tunisia, far from the Egyptian battlefield of El Alamein. The Panther would not see action until 1943 when it was first used at the Battle of Kursk on the Eastern Front. Therefore, the heaviest tank available to the Germans at El Alamein would be the Panzer IV. This tank was first produced in 1937 and will continue production until 1945, by which point more than 8,000 have been built across 10 versions. At the Second Battle of El Alamein, the Africa Corps had 7 earlier versions of the Panzer IV with a short barreled 75mm gun and 28 with a long barreled 75mm gun first produced in 1941, similar to the model which is currently in the game. The long barreled variant was brought in to provide better anti-tank capabilities for the Panzer IV. Perhaps Team 17 could put both variants of the Panzer IV on the El Alamein map with a short barreled version costing slightly less fuel because its gun is less effective against armour. Now, moving to the Netherlands map, which I assume will be set in 1944, what changes will we see for the tank rosters? Let's tackle the German tanks first. Basically, Team 17 could simply include all the tanks currently available to the Germans for them on this map. The recon tank would be the Puma, the light tank would be the Lux, the medium tank would be the Panzer IV with a long barrel, and the two heavy tanks would be the Panther and the Tiger. For greater variety across all the late war maps, Team 17 could also include the El Alamein vehicles for the relevant vehicle types, since many early war tanks like the Panzer III's and the short-barreled Panzer IVs were still in use by the end of the war, they would just need non-desert camo versions. 
These older tank models could simply be made available for less fuel than their more developed late war counterparts. This would add more variety to the German tank rosters and perhaps justify the time taken to model these new vehicles for the game since they could be used more widely across some of the existing maps without crapping all over the historical accuracy. When it comes to the British and Commonwealth tank roster for 1944, those forces in Europe were still using the two pounder armed Daimler armoured car, but they also had the Mark II AEC armoured cars, which had a six pounder or a 57mm gun, as well as the Mark III AECs, which had a 75mm gun, so packing a lot of firepower for an armoured car. The British also had access to M8 Greyhounds, the current recon vehicle for the Americans in Hell Loose, as well as the T17E1 Staghounds, another American-made armoured car. The light tanks of choice for the British Army units by this stage of the war was firmly the Stuart light tank. The Vickers light tank Mark VI would be pretty useless on a 1944 battlefield. The medium tank for the Brits in Europe would not be the M3 Grant or the Crusader, which had both been used widely in North Africa. Those tanks were largely phased out in favour of the M4 Sherman. However, the British did have a new cruiser tank, which could fit the medium tank role. This was the Cromwell tank, which was fitted with a 75mm gun. They were used for the first time in combat during the Allied invasion of Normandy in June 1944 and they saw extensive action with the British Army in Europe until the end of the conflict. Just as on the El Alamein map, one of the heavy tank spots should go to the British Churchill tank. By 1943, the British had already upgunned the Churchill again from the 6-pounder to a 75mm gun. They would also produce a variant with a 95mm howitzer, which was intended for infantry support against bunkers and dug-in positions. However, the tank killer, at least in terms of firepower, that we already know we are getting with the British is going to be the German Firefly, as highlighted in Team 17's roadmap reveal. It was based on the US M4 Sherman, but it was fitted with a more powerful 3-inch or 76.2mm British 17-pounder anti-tank gun, which was capable of penetrating the armour of the Panther and Tiger tanks. The name Firefly comes from the great muzzle flash produced by the 17-pounder when fired. So folks, that is my list of tanks which we could see along with the El Alamein map and the Netherlands map when the British are added. Let me know in the comments which of these you are most looking forward to trying when the British are added to the game in June. <laughs>